Kirk here again, military historian. Um, so today we've got three books in front of us here. Um, these are quite important books for pilots of the gliders. Uh, these are the pilot's notes books. These books are, contol, contain everything to do with the aircraft itself. Um, and what I like about these books is that the pilots actually have um, written in them themselves. As the aircraft changed and they'd be built out of better materials, the payloads became better, especially between the Horsa uh, 1 and, and the Horsa 2 glider, um, which obviously changed quite a bit. The Horsa started with a, um, a small door in the a small door on one side and a large door on another side, um, and it was designed so that they could get a, uh, a, a, a Willys Jeep on and off with a trailer. Obviously, they found it quite difficult to sideload a vehicle, uh, and then they came up with a Mark II, which the nose of it actually came off and it bent to one side so they could get larger pits of kit out, especially the artillery guns, the small artillery guns, and, and the Jeeps come off quicker and easier. And I learned that from Normandy. Um, so by the time we get to Operation Market Guard and Operation Varsity, we have now the Mark uh, II horse glider, so we can get kit in and out quickly. We also had the American uh, Hadrian, what we call the Hadrian glider, what they, they call the Waco glider. Uh, the Americans call the Waco. Uh, and we adopted this as well, and it was great for troop carrying. Um, and as you can see, as we go through, it's got lots of different things in here uh, about the aircraft and how they operated it, the speed of the aircraft should be flying, uh, it level flight, um, the climb. You know, because you're, you're getting towed along. You haven't got an engine on the back of these. Um, you are literally flying as a sailplane. You're sailing along. Um, they started off... Um, with a, a very similar glider called the Hotspur. It was very similar to the um, to the German glider. Um, but it would only carry about 12 guys fully laden. Airspeed Horsa then came up with the idea of the Horsa glider, which we've got in this book here. Uh, now the Horsa glider could carry 36 men uh, into battle with a fully laden, or they could carry Willys Jeeps, um, or they could carry artillery pieces and, and, and um, and mortars and as you can see here from the cockpit it was quite basic um, there's no engine so you've got no throttles or anything but you have got speed brakes you have got your your dials there for your altitudes and your airspeed uh, but that's pretty much all you needed these aircraft were made of wood uh, wooden canvas so and a, and a bit of perspex they were designed so they they be used and then potentially be picked up the Americans came up with an idea of um, air dragging these pieces of kit back off the ground after the after the battle of um of normandy they um they tried to develop a way of the where they could access these aircraft by uh, pickup lines so they'd have a piece of wire that would go across on two wooden poles and it would have a hook on the back of uh, of the aircraft that was going to pick it up maybe dakota they'd hook it and then drag it along and, and then they hopefully get it back in the air with the two pilots on this they always didn't this didn't work all the time you know it depended on how hard the landing was um again you know these aircraft um were a one hit wonder they'd hit the floor the guys get out and fight and hopefully they could be saved but not all of them could be to be reused again everything's wood everything's got um, metal bracings in it um and a, and a bit of canvas and some perspex um so they are very, very, very basic pieces of kit. But not only that, we developed also uh, this aircraft here called the Hamilcar, Hamilcar Gliding 1. So the Hamilcar um, was massive. It was absolutely huge. Um, the cockpit was actually on top of the glider itself. It wasn't at the bottom. Um, as you can see from this diagram here, if I just point out here is where the cockpit is and the nose actually came um, came off it, it went to one side and they could actually put a small tank in there called a trench hard there was an, another smaller tank as well and in Normandy um, when the 11th Panzer was moving down to, to go to the beaches they had reports that there was tanks on the ground and the Germans actually thought that the, the British had moved inland faster than they, than, uh, they expected what had actually happened was the the, um, the small tanks uh, uh, of the armoured corps were um, were dropped in, and they were behind enemy lines. So these um, these tanks that were reported as tanks being moved around were actually dropped in, and, uh, and the Panzers at the time with the small guns on the trench yard, they probably wouldn't have knocked out the German tanks. But just for effect, them tanks being there 
actually stop the armoured attack straight away from a a getting any further forward because they were expecting something a little bit larger that could knock out their tanks. And then the Bocage area of France, and if anybody's ever been to France, is quite enclosed. It's not very good at, for tank battling. So to have uh, these little tanks on the floor supporting the troops was probably uh, you know, a godsend for the, for the, uh, for the forces um, that were out there at the time. Also in this book, you've got the towing positions as well. So obviously, when you're flying along, what you don't need to be is too high or too low. You need to be behind the slipstream of the bomber or the, or the tow aircraft that you've got. So they actually trained a lot on towing, being towed around the UK. And there was lots and lots of accidents um, while this was happening uh, in the UK. And there's lots of spots where there is gliders that have gone into the, into the ground and, and unfortunately it's killed everybody on board, the crew, and the people that were being towed around because these guys would have been the gliders would have been fully loaded there's no point training for an airborne operation with a light load and then going on operations and you've got every man and his dog in the back with every bit of kit you could possibly get on because obviously it becomes quite heavy after that and the pilots needed to get used to flying around with a heavy load so a lot of these aircraft were training with with full loads of airborne landing troops and unfortunately there was quite a few there's there's some um sites near middle wallop area where there's actually monuments now to the king's own scottish borderers um unfortunately they had um were towed by a sterling bomber the sterling bomber had accidentally clipped a tree they'd released the glider but the glider wasn't high enough and it ended up going into the floor with a with a full complement of the troops on the back and that's been memorialized now um on the area where the air, where the the tow where the glider went down the tow aircraft unfortunately crashed as well and it killed the whole crew um so it was a dangerous business even flying around in these just training was a dangerous business so that's the three different types of glider i've got here for the for the notebooks um, and as you can see there's there's lots of information in here and it, 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 they are a treasure trove for historians of what it was like to fly a glider uh, and in some of these books they have uh, the pilot's notes as as the aircraft uh, marks changed um, the pilots obviously uh, scribbled out areas and and rechanged uh, tr uh, loading plans and weights and and things like that in here so absolutely fantastic to go through some of these books uh, and and have a good read of them um, very difficult to get hold of now uh, obviously these were designed to be kept forever they were designed for pilots at the time to fly these aircraft and then after the war a lot of these were discarded and binned so to actually have a, a, a set of three glider books is actually quite special to have here um, and to see right in front of me we'll take some pictures of these and we'll put them online and you can have a uh, have a browse through some of the um, some of the actual notes on there because they are very interesting so that's it for today for this one um, I have got more stuff to show you um, but we'll leave that for another time thanks very much for tuning in and I hope to see you again